Victor Aravalo. Victor Aravalo, I think that's what his name was. Uh, this, uh, let me back up a little bit. This is my van. I finally fixed it. Uh, I ended up replacing. I had a a rock on. This is a, this was a ticker. I had a ticky noise in the rear bank or bank one. Okay. What I ended up doing was uh, replacing the camshaft. This is the old camshaft. What I ended up doing was replacing, and by the way, I did use a used camshaft. All right, this was uh, these outer edges of the load started eating into the rocker arm. The rocker arm failed, and uh, when they failed, they, all they do is sink in the cam load started eating it into this. Now, if you look at this load real good, you can see that the load is still there. But I didn't want to chance this. I mean, the job of the load is to open and close the valve. It's not affected at all in the center. So the outer edge, that's the only thing that uh, was ruined. So if I was pressed, I wouldn't even replace this at all. It, because, again, this is my personal car. Okay, so I end up replacing all the rocker arms, and I replaced the one lifter that was in the bad rocker arm. Okay, like I say, I've, I've been getting away with no lifters at all. The lifters not collapsed. I mean, there's no sense in wasting money on for no reason at all. You gotta understand how those lash adjusters work. All right, but again, I end up using a used camshaft, brand new rocker arms. I replaced all the rocker arms. Okay, you know, I replaced the one last adjuster on the bad rocker arm. All right, so Victor, uh, it's running. Now, I will say this. It did tick in the very beginning, but as you know, the oil has to get up to the valve train. That's normal. Okay, and by the way, speaking of oil, please, 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 please change your oil and filter. I did uh, uh, use what Chrysler recommend as far as what uh, oil, you know, what... Uh, for all I use. I did use on the cap. Remember I tell y'all you should go by your owner's manual or your cap. I did use SAE 5W30. It was pins oil. Okay, I know a lot of guys are going to thicker weight in the, uh, the summertime. A lot of guys are a lot of guys are switching their oil up. That's on you. That's all up to you. I wouldn't experiment with that stuff if you're still under warranty, by the way. If you're out of warranty, then it's your call. You know, put in whatever you read up on you deem necessary but i'm sticking to manufacturer specification which says 5w30 now the brand is also up to you what brand you use i happen to use pinzoil okay but the weight i put in was 5w30 all right here it is right here please change it off because the roller bearings that came out of this y'all see that is in your engine somewhere. Only thing you can hope for is if the oil filter caught it, okay? Because when I changed the oil, I didn't see any roller bearing particles coming out of the oil. So you can only hope that it's chewed up in small pieces and the oil filter captured it. But these roller bearings has to go somewhere. That's the only thing to make these fail. And guys. Uh, I know some of y'all beating yourself up by saying you probably should have used synthetic oil when you got the car. That wouldn't have prevented this, guys. Okay? This is not a lash adjuster problem. Now, synthetic oil and good oil and oil blend mixture, yes, some of that stuff can prevent your lash adjusters from uh, failing and, and keeping them spongy and things like that. But that would not have stopped this. I get, oh, that drives me cuckoo when I hear people say, Mine haven't ticked. You know why it ain't never ticked? Because I use super synthetic oil blend. <laughs> that has nothing to do with a rocker arm coming apart. Think, look at it. Look at it this way. Even if, just say, if I had been running, let's say if I bought this new and I had been running a uh, uh, synthetic oil uh, for the life of the car. You should not be under the impression that this couldn't happen because it still could. This is a failure. This is a part failure, not a lubrication failure. All right, so keep that in mind. People, don't beat yourself up saying you should have changed your oil every 1,000 miles and you wouldn't have had this problem. That wouldn't have had no effect on this. I heard one lady say, I'm going to start changing my oil every 500 or 1,000 miles. I'm a lady, you're just wasting money. 
okay if you're trying to dodge this you're just wasting money this is going to happen when it happens <laughs> no way around it but i don't want this video to be long but victor here you go man that's how one should sound now let me let me put a piece of the video clip of how it sounded before all right uh one split second y'all listen to this So guys, as you can see, yes, it is coming from bank one. I'm getting ready to take bank one apart, take it totally apart. There's okay. no reason for me to bank the bank two here uh, when it's ticking from the rear head. Now, I have the broken rock arm and the camshaft right here. So let me show you what was going on. All right, so you see, this is the rocker arm right here. As you see, because the roller bearings fell out, the ball bearing fell down. So when that happens, the cam would just do this number right there and just, I wish I had a, right there. It's just gonna eat into it. As you can see, <laughs> y'all see this? The rocker arm is all chewed into from the camshaft, which caused the camshaft, uh, some shavings to come off of the load, okay? So that was my problem. Right there, that's how it runs. Wow. Nothing you can do about that. This is gonna happen when it happens. Just when it happens, uh, when you hear a first sign of ticking or get it repaired, so this won't happen. All right? Because you might not have the luxury I had to replace this with a, a known good used camshaft. You might have to pay two or three hundred dollars for a cam. I don't know what a cam costs. Anybody ever replace a camshaft on a Pentastar engine? Uh, put in the comments below. How much do they cost? I know the one with the PCB valve uh, costs quite a bit because it, it has the PCB valve built onto it. Okay, so I don't want this video to be long. But what I'm going to do is, uh, since I'm on this topic, uh we're gonna i'm just gonna add i'm whoa i'm seven minutes deep so i'm gonna add three minutes of uh old footage i have on some of the three uh some of the tickers and how to find the tickers i just uh time lapse them and speed it up and make it go fast but this video is really for my man victor he wanted to hear how one sound after repairs versus how it sounded before and i need y'all to see that this is the same van I don't know how y'all can tell. I guess y'all can tell by the leaves that was on it in the beginning. Well, I guess it's still easier for me to put leaves on it. But, yes, this is my piece of junk. <laughs> this is the van I use for Uber, guys. The ride share. I just need to keep it running so I can make some money uh, on the weekend. All right. So, without further ado, um, I think I'm going to take some questions on uh, the 3.6 engine. Um, yeah, that's what I do. I'll take some more questions on the 3.6 engine. The star. V6 uh, 3.6 liter engine. All right. Thanks for watching, Victor. Thanks for the question, man. Any other question you have, just put them in the comment. I'll do my best to answer.